So we have looked at the short run Phillips curve in lessons. So let me just go through a little bit um, what we saw there, just so we can remind ourselves. If you remember that what um, we were looking at was a diagram like this, where you have the unemployment on the horizontal axis and inflation on the vertical axis. Okay, and if you remember that, um, well, originally, of course, when this was done, it was actually, um, it was wage costs on this vertical axis, but that's been kind of adapted now to, uh, to inflation more generally. And if you remember, we saw that there is generally an inverse relationship between these two. So when unemployment is low, that, uh, that tends to mean that um, aggregate demand is relatively high, and therefore we get a high level of inflation. As inflation uh, pressures disappear, um, that tends to suggest that unemployment will be higher. So what we end up with is a curve like that, which we call the short run Phillips curve. Okay, um, and that basically just kind of shows us that there is an inverse relationship between these two, um, something very important for governments to bear in mind when they're making their policies and so on. But the short run Phillips curve is, is a relatively kind of standalone concept, um, mainly based in AS stuff, it's just formalizing a little bit. What we do need to consider though is um, a more kind of A2 concept now, um, which is basically this aims to deal with the fact that the Phillips curve was generally shown to not be accurate during the 1970s. Okay, so during the 1970s, um, especially the kind of the late 1970s, okay, we had a period of time where we had quite high inflation. Okay, but we also had high unemployment. Okay, now, according to the standard Phillips curve model, we shouldn't be able to have these two things happening at the same time, okay? According to this, that shouldn't be possible. Um, so it meant that actually there was a bit of a problem with the Phillips curve relationship um, in that it didn't seem to be holding. Now, one of the um, the reasons that, um, that you may well have already spotted is actually kind of to do with the nature of this inflation, okay? And the fact that, um, a lot of it was coming off the cost side, specifically oil prices. That was that was one reason, but um, it did also mean that they, um, we had to update our view on the Phillips curve. Okay, and uh, this is where the monetarist school of thought came in. Okay, so we saw the monetarists uh, last week when it came to uh, the Fisher equation and the the belief that uh, that money is neutral. Um, but the monetarists came along, a chap called Milton Friedman, who we spoke about before, um, and they basically developed the Phillips curve. They tried to bring it up to date and uh, modify it a little bit so that it could explain this, this uh, coincidence of inflation and high unemployment, something that we call stagflation. So stagnation and inflation at the same time. Um, stagflation isn't allowed for in the standard Phillips curve model, so we needed to adapt. So what they came up with was the expectations augmented Phillips curve. Okay. Fortunately, we often shorten that to the EAPC. Okay, it's quite a quite a mouthful. So. Um, when you're answering it in a question, use, use the full name the first time, and then from then on, you can just do EAPC. So they came up with this um, EAPC, which aimed to explain how you could actually end up with a period of inflation and unemployment both at the same time. So the way that we think about this, we start from the same sort of point, okay? So we have our unemployment on our horizontal axis, and we have our inflation on the vertical axis. And we start with, as we saw before, our short run Phillips curve. Okay, and essentially the short run Phillips curve then, um, obviously as we saw before, shows us the relationship between inflation and unemployment. So let's, let's say that we're starting from this point here, okay? So we're starting from a point where there is no inflation, okay? So the inflation rate is 0%. Okay, now the expectations bit of this, basically the, the monetarist idea was that people expect inflation to continue at its current rate. So when it's here, okay, when we are at inflation of 0%, okay, 
that's where people expect it to be. Again, that's where people expect that it will continue. Um, so what happens then is that the government may well adopt some form of policy to try and reduce the level of unemployment. So they will try some form of stimulating policy. Uh, so this may be expansionary fiscal policy uh, or expansionary monetary policy, basically to try and boost the level of aggregate demand in the economy, reduce unemployment. So let's say that they decide to... Um, uh, reduce the income tax rates. Okay, reduction in income tax rates will give people a higher disposable income. Uh, they will go out and spend more, and unemployment will be reduced. So what will happen then is that we will move up the short run Phillips curve to a position about here. Okay, now this means that we have a lower level of unemployment. Okay, let's just get rid of this so it's not going to get in our way and confuse us. So we have reduced our level of unemployment. Okay, from U to U1. Okay, we have also increased our inflation rate from zero to I. Okay, so uh, let's say that I is 2%. Okay, so we now have an inflation rate of 2%. Okay, now what obviously is going on here is that uh, people's wages are going up, but then so are prices. So actually, in terms of their real standard of living, um, they're actually no better off now than they were before. Um, and similarly, businesses, although initially they may feel to begin with that they're actually doing better because their prices have gone up as a result of inflation, um, actually they, they are no more profitable because we would expect that wages have gone up by the same amount as well. So as we know, you know, inflation by itself doesn't make anybody um, better off. Okay, it, it doesn't alter the real power of, of money. So what will happen is that initially we will get this reduction in unemployment. Uh, workers will be more attracted um, into the workforce, okay, because they see the higher wages and they want to earn those higher wages. Businesses similarly will be willing to employ more people because um, it, initially it appears to them that they are more profitable and so on. So actually, to begin with, unemployment does fall. The problem, though, is that now um, that... 2% inflation rate starts to become bedded in, and actually that's what people expect to continue. Um, and that would be fine, apart from the fact that after a while, this money illusion starts to disappear. So by the money illusion, we're talking about essentially this, this view of both employees and businesses that they are now better off, um, because they're not, that it's, it's only inflation. So what happens is that once this money illusion fades, then actually we start to move back like that towards um, the previous level of unemployment. We maintain our 2% inflation rate, but we move back towards our, our the, the level of unemployment that we had. Okay, And what that means is that we end up with another Phillips curve like that. And this Phillips curve has changed because the expectations of inflation have also changed. So now, rather than people expecting inflation to be at 0%, they now expect inflation to be at 2%, and the overall level of unemployment hasn't changed. People are no more or less confident about the economy than they were before, um, and this money illusion has evaporated. So now we end up in a situation where we have inflation and unemployment. And obviously this can then happen um, again, the government may adopt another policy to try and reduce unemployment, okay, which leads to um, inflation of, say, 4%. And again, we go through the same process where initially uh, employees and businesses think that they are better off because um, the, the physical amount of money that they see has gone up. So, you know, the number at the bottom of their paycheck is now higher. The actual revenue that they are receiving is higher. But... It's an illusion. It, it's, it's not real. So after a while, that will disappear. That money illusion will disappear. And we'll move back over here, and we will end up with a third Phillips curve that will come down like that. So SRPC2, and so on and so on. And this process will um, continue, um, according to the monetarists. And this is how we end up with um, both inflation because obviously we can see that we're getting more and more inflation over this side, and no significant improvement in unemployment over here. Okay, So it's argued by the monetarists that, that actually this, this doesn't help this sort of stimulus, that, that it, the, the benefit that it 
brings is only temporary, it's only short term. Only for a very brief period of time will you actually succeed in reducing unemployment. Once this money illusion disappears, then unemployment will go back to its, its previous rate. And what you can also probably see is that these points, almost, if I've drawn it properly, line up on this vertical line here, okay, and that we keep bouncing away from and then returning to this vertical line, okay, and this vertical line is the long run Phillips curve, okay, the long run Phillips curve, and the long run Phillips curve, um, according to the monetarists, is um, basically positioned at this rate u here, so remember we had this rate of unemployment here, U, okay, and you can see that even though we temporarily move away from it, okay, and temporarily unemployment is reduced below U, actually once the money illusion disappears we return once again to U, okay, and this then U is what we call the natural rate of unemployment, okay which we often abbreviate to NRU, okay? So the natural rate of unemployment. And the argument is that, uh, from monetarists at least, that government action to reduce unemployment below that level um, actually is not beneficial in the long run, that the benefits are only temporary, um, and actually what you, you end up generating in the long run is inflation. So hopefully that explains you a little bit how we get from... Uh, how, how we link together these kind of these key concepts. So we have the short run Phillips curve, which is basically a, um, a, a factual thing based on research. Um, that was then broken down in the 70s when it didn't seem to hold anymore. The monetarists came along and tried to develop a, a more updated model, a model that reflected the real world more realistically. They came up with this expectations augmented uh, Phillips curve, okay, and the expectations that are being talked about are the expectations that the current rate of inflation will persist. Um, the fact that they think that it will persist means that when they see more money in their paycheck and so on, they feel better off, even if in real terms they are not, which means that the governments can benefit from these temporary boosts in um, the levels of employment, but that actually after a while the level of unemployment in the market will return back to its previous state. And according to the monetarists, um, there is this natural rate of unemployment that in the long run you can't escape from.